body. My name is Michael Aksenov. I live in Moscow and I am a student uh, in school number uh, 1234. Uh, our school principal, Irina Grigoyna, uh, launched an uh, initiative uh, to share different posts and videos about what we do and how we are trying to stay physically and mentally uh, fit and active. Uh, I think um, it's uh, a very good idea uh, now when uh, um, the whole world is on quarantine, the best way of communication is um, internet. As we do not uh, go to school, just doing exercises online is not enough. I think nothing can be better than a person-to-person uh, -person conversation. Fortunately, our family has friends uh, in America with, uh, with whom I can uh, communicate on a regular ba basis uh, to practice my English. Their friend Mayor and his wife Nina Dmitrieva. Uh, Nina came to America 23 years ago. Before that, she had lived um, in Moscow and was an assistant professor uh, of English at the Russian State University of uh, Humani uh, Humanities. 21 years ago, she married Fred Mayer. Uh, they, li they live in Ann Arbor, Michigan, where the University of Michigan is situated. Fred and Nina are retired now, but they have a very active life. Nina continues teaching. Fred is a member of several uh, co committees and, uh, and they both give lectures from, uh, from time to time. Uh, now we are all uh, in one and the same boat because of coronavirus and have uh, to stay home. I decided it would be interesting to do an interview with Fred and Nina. They said that I could share it with you. I will start with Nina. Nina Borisovna, how did it happen that you came to America? Hello, Misha. Um, I'm very happy to be with you. Uh, and uh, I would like to give credit to your English and uh, um, to give credit to your English teacher. Your English is very good. Thank you very much. Um, it's a good question. And uh, um, I will try to be short. Um, I came to America in 19, let me see, 90, 97 or 96, uh, you said 23 years ago, yes, you're right. Um, and that was on a sabbatical, and I was staying with the, um, uh, a young um, American musician. Uh, she was very much interested in music and Russian history, uh, and we became friends, and uh, we actually um, uh, like to correspond, and then once she invited me to come, and I came on sabbatical, as I, uh, as I uh, say. So anyhow, um, uh, when I was uh, staying with her, I volunteered because I didn't have the right to work because I was on a guest visa, uh, and I taught um, uh, Russian uh, immigrants um, uh, English, and uh, after my sabbatical, I had to go back to Moscow and continue teaching. And uh, when I um, uh, returned, uh, I, I went to America for, uh, several times, you know. Um, and uh, my friend Lois, uh, the musician whom I'm talking about, also visited me in Moscow. So it was a very well-developed friendship. So when I came um, uh, to America uh, in 1997, I believe, um, one of my students uh, introduced me to um, a man, uh, and uh, um, uh, his name was... Uh, Fred Mayer, and he was an American architect, and uh, uh, he worked uh, for the University of Michigan. So, um, and uh, when I met him, I was very much surprised that he uh, shared um, uh, my uh, love, um, uh, my love to music, and my interest in. Uh, um, literature, etc. And so also he was an architect and my father was an architect too. So um, 
that's I, I think I answered your question. Um, yes, thank so. you. Uh, and next question. Do you like uh, the city where you live? Uh, yes, I know I... you live in Ann Arbor. Right. Uh, it's Ann Arbor, uh, and it's a pretty famous uh, city because uh, um, uh, Brodsky, you probably know the name of poet Brodsky, uh, uh, Iosif Brodsky, uh, started his uh, American career in Ann Arbor uh, mm -hmm. at the university. And uh, uh, other um, Russian famous uh, people uh, not only uh, visited Ann Arbor, but they worked in Ann Arbor. Uh, and it is a university city. Um, it's not very large, but um, uh, it's, um, uh, as I say, uh, a university city. And the city is a university, and the university is the city. Because uh, uh, when I say a university, uh, I want to give you an idea what it is. There are uh, more than 150 buildings at the university. So it's the whole city and uh, uh, the university is huge. Uh, uh, about 40,000 students uh, studied at uh, the university. So yes, I like it very much because uh, you can uh, go to concert halls, museums, uh, um, uh, exhibitions, uh, there are a lot of different kind of uh, events there. It is interesting. And uh, when I came, it was a pretty quiet uh, place, but now um, it, it is a little bit too busy. Um, and uh, I, I but still, I, I, I like and I love, I can say I love uh, Ann Arbor. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Uh, next question, please. Uh, I, know, I know that you still teach English in America. Um, it is English-speaking country. I do not understand. Who cannot speak English where? Who are your students? <laughs> That's a good question. You're right that uh, America is an English-speaking country, but uh, number one, uh, not all Americans speak good English because some people are not well educated. And uh, uh, when I came to America for the first time, I thought, oh, everybody speaks uh, wonderful English. No. Um, and... Uh, um, Unfortunately, you know, many Americans, uh, even who were born here, uh, they make a lot of mistakes. But I don't teach them. Uh, I teach um, English as a second language. So uh, I teach uh, immigrants who came to America uh, and uh, want to become American citizens, or I teach international students uh, who come uh, to study at the university or at different colleges. Uh, usually they know English a little bit, uh, but um, uh, American uh, educators and uh, prefer uh, to hire um, foreigners like me with uh, uh, education uh, to teach uh, students or immigrants because Americans uh, don't like and don't like to um don't like to explain grammar rules, for example, uh, and uh, uh, that's why they they um, mostly they hire uh, foreigners to teach English as a second language. And uh, I teach grammar, I teach uh, um, reading, I teach. Uh, um, conversational uh, English, um, that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, do you teach only English? No. Uh, when I was in Moscow, I got a diploma of communication and culture, uh, and I teach communication and culture. It's a very popular uh, discipline in America. Uh, and I also I teach Russian as a second language because I graduated from the University of Patrice Lumumba, and I have the diploma of uh, Russian as a second language. So. Um, uh, now I have only one student whom I teach Russian. Actually, it's more uh, more than uh, teaching because we talk, and she knows uh, Russian pretty well. Uh, and uh, also communication and culture. Um, and uh, um, I uh, also teach uh, Russian uh, students from Russia on Skype. Um, and uh, I. Um, 
no different kind of uh, programs like um, uh, you know t how to teach um, uh, different kinds of exams and TOEFL and um, but it's not interesting. So I I, I teach uh, Americans uh, and I teach uh, Russian kids also like on me. Skype. Yes, I don't teach you, uh, but we 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 just like to talk. Yes, um, I like used me. to teach your father. I used to teach your father. Yes. So. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that you make a uh, PowerPoint presentations uh, from time to time. Uh, what, are, uh, what are they about? Uh, yes, I found it very interesting. Uh, I even can make now movies using movie makers or whatever. So PowerPoint, PowerPoint presentations, it's a kind of a lecture. So uh, when I give lectures, um, uh, I make PowerPoint presentations. So um, I, um, they're, they're about uh, different things because it depends who are the listeners. Uh, if my listeners are interested in history, for example, uh, once I made a presentation about the history of Moscow and St. Petersburg, actually uh, my husband participated in that lecture. With, uh, uh, one hour um, he, w he was talking uh, about um, St. Petersburg and then he made a comparison uh, with the architecture in Moscow in the history also uh, and uh, um, uh, uh, some uh, listeners some people are interested in uh, uh, Russian culture uh, so they're about Russian culture history um, uh, literature uh, different topics um, and uh, some, sometimes you know um, arts and music of course uh, yes. okay and uh... Uh, next question. Uh, do, uh, do you miss Moscow? Uh, I do. Uh, uh, I, uh, I can say that uh, my last three visits uh, were very nice and very interesting. Moscow is um, uh, very beautiful now and there are so many um, wonderful uh, restaurants, uh, you know, I, I miss Moscow restaurants. And uh, also, uh, I was impressed with the changes uh, um, in Moscow, like fantastic museums, uh, buildings look beautiful, uh, they're um, painted uh, and uh, uh, the lights uh, at night are very very impressive uh, so uh, i would say that i can't say that i miss moscow every day or whatever i like to visit moscow it's very very pleasant and very very interesting a and i try to come every uh, every year mm -hmm. good and uh, thank you very much um it's time uh, for a commercial break you're very welcome. Thank you. Hello, Misha. Hello, Fred. Um, you now I continue my interview with Fred and Nina. Now, I would like to ask Fred uh, several questions. Fred is an architect and his official position was Master Campus Planner for the University of Michigan. Fred uh, graduated from three universities, had a wonderful 37-year career at the university, wrote three books and many, uh, and many um, articles. How, uh, how are you, sir? I'm fine. How are you today? Uh, good, very good. Uh, <laughs> you, you graduated from three universities. Yes. Uh, what were we? Actually, I attended three universities, and I'll explain. I started uh, at Pratt Institute in New York City studying architecture. And as I uh, got into the architectural studies in my second year, we had a project in city planning, and I found that really very interesting. As a matter of fact, I became more interested in city planning than I did in the design of individual buildings. And so in my third year, I decided I wanted to change 
my major from architecture to city planning. But Pratt did not offer a uh, city planning option at that time. So I had to change universities. And I transferred to Rutgers University in New Jersey. And that's where I got my undergraduate degree. So I didn't actually graduate from Pratt. I, but I did when I transferred to Rutgers. I graduated from there. In, and I was in the program in city planning. And then I went to Cornell University in Ithaca, New York, and got a master's degree in city and regional planning. So those were the three universities I attended. Ah, uh, good, very good. Uh, why did you decide to become an architect? Well, when I was in high school, I worked for my uncle, and he was a, a carpenter and builder. And he, keep t he kept talking about how the world needs more realistic architects who understood the building, the way buildings go together. And I decided that's something I'd like to do. So when I graduated from high school, I enrolled in architecture school and my career developed from there. Mm -hmm. uh, you, were ma uh, you were a master campus planner. Uh, what kind of work did you do? Well, uh, the interesting thing about it is a campus planner for a university is like a city planner for a, a city. And what I need to explain first is that Amer <coughs> excuse me. American universities often occupy a large piece of land, and there are many buildings that are on these land. So doing the overall planning for them is like doing the overall planning for a city. You have to deal with buildings, roads, landscaping, utilities, all of those kind of things. <coughs> and the goal of a city planner, excuse me for a minute. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, good. I just, know that just, no, let me, let me finish. I, I just took a drink of water. Uh, the, the goal of a, a planner, a, a campus planner, is to make everything work together. So the way an architect would design an individual building, the campus planner tries to design all of the things so they work together and make a nice harmonious composition. And to do that, I would develop first master plans for the campus area, and then I'd work on the individual projects. Like I'd recommend the sites for new buildings or the location for new roads, or work with the landscape architects to develop the landscape to make sure that everything kind of worked together to produce an overall harmonious outcome. So that was my job. Mm -hmm. Good, very good. Uh, I know that you are very much um, interested uh, in Russian history. Um, why is it so? Well, I've always been interested in history generally. But when I married Nina, of course, she came from Russia and I started becoming interested in Russian history and reading Russian history. And uh, I, I found it very interesting. So uh, I developed an ongoing interest in it. And in some aspects, there's certain parts of Russian history now I know better than a lot of Russians do. <laughs> Uh, have you ever visited Moscow or St. Petersburg? Uh, which city do you like best? Well, yes, I visited both cities w uh, shortly after Nina and I were first married. And they're very different cities because Moscow is a city that it's a very old city and it grew sort of naturally over time, uh, adding pieces here and pieces there and and developing almost uh, with a life of its own. St. Petersburg was a very deliberately planned city. When Peter the Great moved the capital to St. Petersburg, he hired Italian and French planners and architects and came in and told them, I want you to design the city, decide where the Admiralty is going to go, decide where the palace is going to go, decide on the street plans. So it was built from the very beginning according to a plan. So mm -hmm. Moscow is an interesting city because of the way it evolved over time and because of the older buildings, the older churches in the Kremlin and its uh, natural growth outward. Whereas St. Petersburg is an interesting city 
because it's the work of particular designers and you can deal with the monumental buildings and the, the public squares that were created in the street system. So both are interesting to me and both are attractive to me, but they're very different. Yeah. Ah, uh, thank you. Nina okay. told me that you do not speak Russian, but That's maybe right. you know, uh, yes, but maybe you know some Russian words. Uh, what are they? Oh, I know things like da and yet and no ladna and panyadna and kluch and sunka and uh, da svidanya. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. boy. <laughs> <laughs> and gospody. <laughs> I know I'm in trouble when I hear, oh, bonjour, boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can talk to you, Anita, for hours, but probably we have to stop here. I would be happy to talk to you both again in future. Thank you very much. Stay safe and healthy. You're welcome. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.